I lie whenever it suits me. Harry admits to following Megan's style of craftily. I am so happy to receive your well wishes, and I am also more than willing to keep on sharing more useful information with you, my loyal friends. Do you all remember that time that Harry was talking about his memory, and he said something like that it curates things as it sees fit? What an interesting way to describe oneself as a big fat liar. Yet again, Harry's little brain cells have been hard at work creating his latest truth, his latest fantasy really, and I'm sure he had some help from his incredible wife Meghan Markle, who has a really amazing track record with my truth. But yet again, Harry is showing that he really is allergic to the truth, because all these self-serving tales of woe that he told in his latest Netflix docuseries, Heart of Invictus, have been proven to be big fat lies, and this time they were debunked by the Express newspaper, using, drumroll please, Harry's own interviews from the past. Most people, when they're small children, figure out that it's incredibly difficult to keep things straight if you lie all the time. Most of us understood that very early on, and so we stopped lying. And in Harry's case and Meghan's case, over many years, they still have not figured that out. And if Meghan cannot tell the truth to a British judge, then is Harry ever going to stand a chance at mastering the art of deception? Probably not. How much longer is this going to go on? I mean, how much more pain does his family have to put up with? And what about the good people of the UK? They really took Harry and Meghan into their hearts when they got married back in 2018. How much longer is Harry going to keep on standing in front of cameras and showing the world what a worthless fool he really is? Well, obviously he's not finished yet. Harry and Meghan are going to keep on doing exactly this as long as somebody's giving them license to do so. They don't care if it's Netflix or U.S. Democrats or Sugars. There are always some enablers out there if you just look hard enough. And it is a sad state of affairs, isn't it? Are the German taxpayers, I wonder, having to pay for their security when they're in Dusseldorf? I hope not. If they are, then please, somebody let me know why. I did hear that Meghan had demanded a red carpet and they refused that demand, good on them, and they also refused her permission to participate in an interview on German TV. I am crossing my fingers that these rumors are true. All right, let's talk a little bit about why Harry and Meghan got together in the first place. Why did he fall for her? My suspicion is that Meghan was able to offer him something that he thought he wanted, a non-stop party on the celeb circuit. She used his title and her connections, which it turned out she didn't really even have. But anyway, she used whatever she had or whatever she thought she had to make a lot of money for doing diddly squat. All she really did was show up on some talk shows. But she was convinced that was going to be enough. She was going to become the next Diana and everyone was going to love her. Megan really thought that they were going to be able to use those titles to make a lot of money off marketing products. Of course, that was never going to work. And then what about Marcus and Doria? Well, all Marcus's girls married incredibly wealthy men, and they instantly produced a child. This is his rinse and repeat formula. He knows what he's doing. He's basically a pimp. I have never seen a more unhappy bridegroom, though, than Harry. He looked so angry. I thought he was going to dump her at the altar. The coverage by U.S. media outlets of their whole relationship and the marriage and all that was bizarre. It really felt like the media was trying to hype them up or maybe working for them in some way. Let's remember that ridiculous story about the high-speed car chase during bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. I mean, the fact that any media outlet even ran that story tells us there is something up, something fishy going on. And then, of course, right after they ran that story, they had to publish the stuff that NYPD and the mayor of New York were saying about that it didn't happen like that, basically calling Meghan and Harry liars without being direct about it. And then, of course, the South Park episode. My goodness, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard in my entire life. I think that was almost the straw that broke the camel's back. I've been watching this story for a long time. Now, in the beginning, she and Harry were doing pretty well in America, much to my annoyance because I never liked either of them. They did okay even after the Oprah interview, in fact. Not in Britain, of course, but in the place that Meghan really cared about, Hollywood, because she believed that was the only place she could possibly succeed with her aspirations. And really, it wasn't only Hollywood, because let's remember, Meghan Markle thought she was going to get involved in U.S. politics. See, I think it had so much to do with the sense that Meghan and Harry were seen as having the right politics. So much of the media coverage was skewed to make them appear a lot better than they really are. Only the New York Post and Mercury News and a very few other media outlets were onto them from the start. 
But then after the Netflix show, things started to change. Again, with pathetic complaints, evidence of them planning the whole thing the whole time, because why else would they always be taking those photos? They blame the royal family for being jealous of them and how amazing they are, how much people love them. But the reality of the situation is they're a couple of word salad spewing idiots. The curtsy complains as if curtsying is such a difficult thing. Overexposure and absurd perceived grievances certainly didn't help matters. And it's interesting because the more they say, the worse they end up looking. Usually, people explain their side of the story and we want to sympathize with them, but not with Meghan and Harry. I mean, after Spare, after the Netflix docuseries where they claimed they were going to tell us their side of the story and make us finally understand them, we don't understand them anymore, or maybe we do understand them, we just don't like them. But still, they did manage to find a great deal of success, actually. And it still felt like their PC political stance made it difficult for so many of us to say what we really felt about them because we didn't want to be labeled racist or whatever. And then, of course, came the story about that high-speed car chase that could have led to a crash. How incredibly ironic, right? As if it really were this big crash and prevented them and their absurd schemes from ever reaching any successful conclusion. And now they get to live in a McMansion that looks like the Olive Garden and has 16 toilets. It really is pathetic. It's funny to me, too, how Meghan and Harry try to portray themselves as these ordinary people who anybody could relate to, but they're not. They're not that at all. I mean, do average ordinary people insist on flying in private jets all the time? Do average ordinary people insist on buying ill-fitting designer clothing and wearing only that? No. So obviously, average ordinary people cannot relate to them at all, and they severely lack the tact and discretion necessary if they want to belong to the upper class. The only talents they really seem to have would be Harry's good at playing polo, and then Meghan is pretty good at courting publicity on social media. It really is as if they do not know themselves. They don't know who they are. They don't know where they belong. They don't know what they want to do or where they want to go. And that stupid docu-series they made, they acted like that was going to be so illuminating that we were finally going to understand them. But they just did the same old nonsense they always do, trashing Harry's family, making up a bunch of lies. Most people didn't even watch the whole series because they could tell from the very beginning it was filled with lies. And do we really need to watch Megan getting fitted for gowns? Ew. And then the book came out. I mean, just when we thought things couldn't get any worse, Spare hit the shelves. Now, who in the world wants to read about a grown man whining that his brother broke his necklace and he fell down in a dog bowl and it hurt? And also that he wasn't the favorite in the family and his brother got a bigger bedroom than he did and more sausages. Wah, wah, wah. No wonder it is the most thrown away book in hotels and beaches and every other place. You cannot build an empire out of lying and not doing any work whatsoever. I did hear that some people tuned into Megan's Spotify series because they were needing something to help them sleep. <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm just being accurate. They are absurd. They're really cartoonish at this point. I mean, South Park nailed it, but South Park didn't even have to try very hard. The comedy is obvious with the two of them. And I really believe the reason people still want to read about them is because watching them is exactly like watching a train wreck. We cannot take our eyes off of it. We know we shouldn't, but we're still waiting for that final explosion. And seriously, I know Harry completely lacks self-awareness, but what was he thinking doing all those interviews, blaming everybody for every mistake that he has ever made? But at the same time, he is breaching the privacy of his own father, his brother, and his sister-in-law. And then he had the nerve to show up for his TV appearance at the coronation. My goodness. Harry really is a pathetic individual. He's a liar. He's a puppet. He's jealous. He's vindictive. He's not a very nice boy. And you, what do you think about Harry and Meghan? Please tell me your opinion below in the comments section and everyone else can also discuss this couple together. Don't be afraid to like and share my video with your friends and family members who need it if you think my videos are interesting and fun. And don't be afraid to click the subscribe button to get more updates in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have a lovely weekend and we'll be back to see you all tomorrow.